Well, the statistics are staggering. Only one in ten children who is sexually assaulted actually report that crime to authorities. And often the victims are plagued with guilt and shame day after day. But police say one brave Austin 13-year-old girl overcame that stigma and helped bring her accusers to justice. Fox Evans Foti Kalerja is here now with her story. Foti? Yeah, Loriana, and there's still one person that has not been caught in this case. It is a 19-year-old girl who police say forced this 13-year-old victim to sign a consent contract after she was gang raped by four men. It is a horrific crime that police say all started with a phone call. Take a look. She actually misdialed the number and got in, in touch with the suspects that way. A wrong number connected that 13-year-old girl to these two men, 21-year-old Vance Harris and Bernard Small. Both men convinced the girl this past May to meet up. They talked her into allowing them to come get her from her house. As soon as she got in the truck, they started sexually assaulting her. Police said the girl had no way out. She was driven to a home in southeast Austin off Palo Blanco Lane, where she was pushed into a bedroom and sexually assaulted again, not once, not twice. Lots Harris told the victim that she had to have sex with Ray Harper because they're blood gang members and this is what gang members do. Um, the victim felt that she had no choice but to comply. A total of four times, police say three of the suspects were documented gang members. The victim screams heard through a window by a 19-year-old girl named Rebecca Ward, who went inside and saw the girl crying, wearing only a shirt. That's when she told the girl she needed to sign a consent contract. After signing that paper, the girl was driven to Brody Lane and Wildwood Drive in South Austin, where sheriff's deputies found her and returned her to her worried parents. The frail 13-year-old finally confessed. It did take a lot of courage on her part. Um, she, was, she was scared. Uh, we actually had to interview her twice uh, because of that. Um, it wasn't until uh, after she uh, received some counseling that she, she decided to cooperate with us. A horrific story indeed. Sandra Martin here with the Center for Child Protection. Sandra, thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, that girl did the right thing because she notified police and came forward, something that one in ten people who are sexually abused children do only do, one in ten. It takes enormous courage yeah. for a child to be able to do that. That's a very vulnerable age. It's an age when they're particularly conscious of their sexuality. Sure. And telling is the very first step in recovery. You're seeing, you told me, more and more of these aggravated sexual assaults of these children. Why is that happening? Well, for the physical abuse, uh, we think there's an association with the economy and the stress. There have been some horrific injuries to children but for doing the things that children are supposed to do. And I think with the sexual assault, I think there are great many reasons, some of them having to do with culture, I think in terms of kids being sexualized much, much earlier than they might normally be. Sure. And I want to mention that your group, that's, uh, the Center for Child Protection, is actually the first place that these children go to right after they make this report to police. So your counselors are there for the first time to actually, you know, see these kids and, and to get their, their information and their story. I do want to uh, mention real quick, one in four girls, you told me, um, will be sexually assaulted before they turn 18. One in six boys will be sexually assaulted right. before they turn 18 years old. Um, only one in 10 actually report this sexual abuse. Um, real quick, I want to talk about the one in six boys because I think a lot of people don't talk about that. Why, why uh, don't these boys come forward? Oh, I think sexual abuse in general, you know, um, the best way that I typically say it, most of us think guilt is about something we've done. Shame is about who we think we are. Right. And shame is the legacy that sexual abuse children have. And for little boys, I think there's such fear associated with their manhood right. and such fear and homophobia that they sometimes have much more difficulty in being brave and enduring and being quiet. They're not permitted to cry as much or to maybe exhibit some of those behaviors that would tell adults that something's wrong. Okay, Sandra, thank you so much for being here with us. We appreciate it. Loriana, back to you.